All right, in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to uh, <clears throat> convert your RIP DVDs to a format like AVI, you know, DivX or whatever, to make them smaller. Because you know, you rip you rip DVDs to your I don't know. I have a lot of external storage, but I don't know. I still like them to be even smaller so I can fit more on there. Uh, you can convert them to DivX or whatever uh, with this program called Auto Gordian Knot. I believe is how it's pronounced, or Auto GK. Uh, download for free. You know, it's full feature, everything. You can uh, choose to donate to them or whatever. But real cool. Once you download it, install it. Uh, icon. I don't know if you can see it with that background, but it looks looks like this. It's called Auto GK. Open it up. Uh, up here at the top. You got an input file. Now your input file, if you're familiar with ripping DVDs, when you rip a DVD you get a video file with a bunch of VOB files in it, and two IFO files and stuff like that. Then you get a blank audio uh, file as well. And all the blank audio does is uh, lets DVD players know it's an actual DVD to play. They look for it if it's not in there, if you delete it, and then try to burn it to a disc or whatever. Uh, it's not going to work. But anyway, uh, click on this right here, open the input file, go to wherever your RIP DVD is. Mine is on the terabyte drive somewhere. Okay, there it is. Right there. Okay. These are all movies that are still RIP DVD format. Alright. You open this up. This will not be in there. Delete that. Open it up. Looks like this. You got a video and audio. Click the video. And you got two IFO files. It doesn't really matter because if you click on the wrong one, it'll tell you that it's the wrong one. Just open it back up and click it on. It's this VTS one all the time. Once you click it up, it'll load and it'll say, uh, Subtitle tracks, blah blah blah. I'll just leave that click and then output file. You click on there, and this is where it's going to be saved to once it converts. Uh, it always saves it in a, the same destination, but it makes a name all along. A little trick to that is to click back one file and then it'll shorten the name just to whatever. AVI. This is liar liar. Okay, click save. All right. On this tab, you can either make it in like two CDs or whatever to separate them if it's too big to fit on one disc. I'm not sure why you would do that, but uh, I always do custom size and megabytes, and I just do 900. Some people do 700, some people do 800. I just do 900 megabytes. It's right under a gig. You can fit probably 4.7. Naturally, you can fit four, four of them on uh, one disc if you like to watch DivX movies through DVD players and stuff. Okay, and then I go to advanced settings and change the aspect ratio to 720. I'm not sure. I don't know. It just makes it where it comes out and it can be displayed in widescreen, which all my monitors and stuff are widescreen, so I like that. And then that's all you got. Okay. Uh, and then right here, add job. It adds it right here. Shows you what's what it says, what movie it is, blah, blah, blah. Now you can go back. If you got multiple DVDs you want to convert, click on them and uh, do the whole process and then add another job. And then you do it again and add another job. And then, uh, or if you just do want to do one or you want, once you're done adding them all, you just hit start. And they'll start, they'll say, this is your little progress right here in this blank box. It'll tell you all about it, what it's doing and stuff. Now, to convert one DVD, this is a 1.6 gig. Uh, processor with uh, two two gigs of RAM. It'll do it in about three hours. Average DVD with no no. Uh, I take all the subtitles and stuff off whenever uh, I rip, and uh, all the menus and stuff. It'll take about three three and a half hours with my notebook, which is a 1.6 gig. It takes about five hours per movie. So if you got a real fast computer, it may not take that long, which I don't. I just have like five computers, so. Uh, that's all you gotta do for that. When it outputs, it output an AVI. You can double click on it if you have a DivX codec, and it'll play.
That's all you gotta do for that.